In 1968, Ivan Sutherland, a pioneer in computer graphics and human-computer interaction, developed the first theoretical concept for an augmented reality headset. This head-mounted display would project virtual images onto the wearer's field of view, superimposing them on the real world. The ominous way in which the device was suspended from the ceiling, directly over the user's head, earned it the name, the Sword of Damocles, after a legendary story from Greek mythology. This story takes place in the Greek settled city of Syracuse, where tyrant King Dionysus II ruled. Although Dionysus was rich and powerful, he remained in a constant state of paranoia. Puzzled by the contrast between the king's high status and nervous demeanor, an advisor to the court named Damocles questioned the king out of envy for his wealth and power. To teach Damocles a lesson, Dionysus offered to let Damocles trade places with him for a day and experience what it was really like to be king. Damocles eagerly accepted, but soon realized the burden and danger of holding such power when Dionysus suspended a sword above the throne by a single hair of a horse's tail. Fast forward nearly five decades after Sutherland's invention, tech billionaire Mark Zuckerberg stands before a massive audience of fans, industry professionals, and investors. As part of Facebook's annual F8 conference, he eagerly lays out a roadmap for the next 10 years. The roadmap contains the following three major areas of focus, connecting everyone to the internet, artificial intelligence, as well as virtual and augmented reality. Zuckerberg explains how the overarching goal that ties all three of these areas together is to give everyone in the world the power to share anything they want with anyone. Fast forward to present day, six years into this roadmap, and the world of immersive technologies contained under the umbrella term extended reality continues to develop at a rapid and unwavering pace. While this may sound like an exciting prospect to those who stand to benefit directly from tech innovation like Zuckerberg, one can't help but wonder, what does the future hold for a species determined to bend, warp, and push the boundaries of its own reality to its limits? In other words, are we the king? Or are we Damocles in this story? In this video, you're going to see the future. All of our culture, our music, our writing, our art is going to be stored in computers and we're going to read it through computers and see it through computers and hear it through computers. The fact of the matter is, in virtual reality, there is no limit to what we can do. Virtual reality holds a key to the evolution of the human mind. Virtual reality will force us to ask, what is real? The combined value of XR is projected to be approximately $465 billion by 2027. From heart-pumping immersive gaming experiences to revolutionary practical applications in learning and training, there is a growing list of industries propelling the extended reality market forward. For Facebook and many other social media platforms, XR is said to completely transform the media and entertainment industry as we know it, allowing for seemingly limitless opportunities to market products and services to consumers, all the while increasing engagement to new levels that were previously outside of their reach. Zuckerberg's metaverse, along with the evolution of the digital avatar, are two of perhaps the most compelling and concerning examples of how AR, VR, and MR are coming together to collectively transform how we interact as a human species in the future. Avatars have a long history on the internet. Since the early days of text-based online chat rooms and forums, avatars eventually developed to include graphical elements. These avatars could be used in a variety of online environments, including virtual worlds, massive multiplayer online games, and social media platforms. Initial versions of avatars designed for the metaverse have received plenty of criticism online due to their lack of realism and lack of... Legs! I know you have been waiting for this! Everyone has been waiting for this! However, during the most recent Meta Keynote presentation, Zuckerberg offered up a glimpse into what he thinks will eventually become the most powerful remote connection technology that has ever existed. Photorealistic, full-body codec avatars. Where previous iterations of metaverse avatars failed with their limited set of pre-programmed movements and expressions, Zuckerberg claims that the next generation of avatars will be fully controllable in real time and able to communicate using authentic expressions, eye contact, and subtle motor movements. Although he admits that it'll be a while before this type of hyper-realistic avatar is available to everyone in the metaverse, there are those like Julia Hart, CEO of global talent media company, 
Elite World Group, who are already using them as a new way to market to her customers around the world. Using photorealistic avatars of celebrities, models, and influencers to market virtual products to potential customers is an easy win for brands looking to take part in the emerging XR metaverse economy. That being said, there are two sides to every virtual coin, and for every opportunity there is to win big in the metaverse, there are just as many to lose. Fraud has hit this new digital frontier. All our land got stolen. You feel violated. It could happen to anyone. Go to a virtual meeting room. Who has access to view that room? Eyes, fingerprints, and voice prints. In the metaverse, these will become a bigger issue with the use of virtual reality. Before Facebook rebranded to Meta, it faced a lot of controversy regarding its inability to protect the data of its users. In 2019, Zuckerberg had to testify before Congress when it was revealed that a company called Cambridge Analytica had obtained the personal data of millions of Facebook users without their knowledge or consent. We need to rethink our relationship with people and our responsibility there across every single part of what we do. Causes for concern regarding the security of the metaverse and its users run the gamut from virtual identity theft and impersonation to MetaMask wallets linked to valuable digital assets being compromised via phishing scams. As XR technologies develop towards increasingly high fidelity avatars, the need to ensure the safety of a user's highly personal biometric data and potentially valuable assets linked to their avatar has become more important than ever. Despite efforts by Meta to mitigate these risks through encryption and authentication of their users' accounts, it's likely that these risks will always remain in one form or another. The vast majority of the data uh, that, that Facebook knows about you is because you chose to share it. Right now, the future of XR in the metaverse is uncertain. Each year, there are new and improved versions of software and hardware being released. While several companies, including Meta, are developing their own handheld controllers and haptic accessories designed to enhance the customer's virtual experience, none have come close to reaching the holy grail of complete sensory immersion. Elon Musk, along with his team at Neuralink, believe the key to solving this is to directly interface with the human brain using their latest implantable prototype, the N1 chip. Fundamentally, the entire human experience, everything we perceive, everything we sense, everything we think, comes from the brain. This is done through the release of chemical signals called neurotransmitters triggered by electrical spikes called action potentials between about 87 billion nerve cells in the brain called neurons. With the N1, users may be able to one day control their movement and interactions in a virtual environment using their thoughts alone. The most recent proof of concept being a monkey trained to play Pong entirely with its mind. Although the N1 has yet to be tested on humans and is likely decades away from what Musk and his team have promised, such technology may one day eliminate the need for physical controllers and bulky headsets entirely. Haptic feedback could be provided directly to the brain, allowing users to physically feel the sensation of touch, creating a seamless connection between the user's mind and the virtual world. The future is going to be weird. Currently, virtual reality, augmented reality, and mixed reality all have their own unique use cases, pros, cons, and limitations. Given the rate at which this field has advanced since the early days of Ivan Sutherland, it's not hard to imagine a future where XR overcomes some of these limitations. One only has to look as far as the mass adoption of computers, smartphones, and social media, despite their own fair share of skeptics, to see proof of how this could be possible. So what happens when this next generation of technology begins to extend beyond the threshold of reality itself, when the lines between the real and the unreal can be blurred beyond recognition? Will individual increasingly opt out of real life in favor of living in these new hyper-simulated virtual spaces? Will we even have a choice in the matter? And can we really trust the entities that create these new realities to have our best interests in mind? Regardless of whether Sutherland meant to warn us of some sort of impending danger or not, as we rush head on towards this uncertain future of innovation, may we never forget to stop every so often and look up and appreciate the weight of our own powers. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. For more videos about artificial intelligence, science, and technology, subscribe to the channel. And while you're at it, watch another video here.